Today I'm talking to Eve. She's been eating an animal-based diet since 1973. And in the 50 years she's been doing the carnivore diet, a lot of things have happened. And we're going to get into all of that in this video, including her latest CAC score and what her doctor said about her cholesterol. Just before we get into this, guys, please do me a massive favor and smash the like button and also subscribe. It really helps out the channel and I am grateful for your support. Let's meet Eve. Eve, thank you so much for joining me. I believe you've been eating an animal-based diet for about 50 years now. Is that right? That is correct. So how did, how did all this start? How did you come onto an animal-based diet? And uh, how did you stick to it for so long without getting scurvy? <laughs> well, let me start at the top, at the beginning. Mm. Uh, I grew up in a family where my father was Greek. And... We had to have lamb at least once a week. My father was a big meat eater. My mother was a southern gal from Georgia, and she ate, well, she didn't understand food. She was very poor, and they just ate whatever they could get. But my father was the meat eater, and when they got married, my father taught my mother how to cook lamb, <laughs> lots of lamb. And there was always a leg of lamb cooked once a week on weekends and he would carve all the meat off the bone and then he'd take the bone and he'd stand over the kitchen sink and he would gnaw on that bone with pure pleasure none of us in the family got to touch that bone but him so I grew up eating meat a side of vegetable a salad with oil and vinegar there was never any bread on the table then when mother would cook, she would make spaghetti with gravy. And her idea of eating spaghetti was with a loaf of wonder bread, slathered with mayonnaise, and then she would put her spaghetti on top of it and eat it in an open-faced sandwich. And she would eat a third of that loaf. And being a child, I parented her. So that was the only way I knew how to eat spaghetti was with wonder bread and mayonnaise. Well, I grew up eating like that, but we didn't have internet, we didn't have cell phones, so we were on our bicycles, and I already stayed lean. Now, fast forward to the age of 18, and I was in a really bad car accident. And when I came to in the emergency room, the surgeon was cutting my clothes off of me. And what the first thing that came out of my mouth was, am I going to have be able to have have babies 18 years old and he said oh yeah you can have all the babies you want honey but arthritis is going to come down the road and kick you in the ass and and I ended up in the wheelchair for three months there was no such thing as physical therapy and I lived in a wheelchair at my mother's and I ate through the refrigerator and I gained 38 pounds and I'd never been heavy before when I got out of the wheelchair, I got me a job in a hotel, and I would take my lunches at the bar. And one afternoon, I was listening to the barmaid talking to the hostesses and saying, I have a date this weekend, and I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And I looked at her. I was struggling with this weight I had. I looked like an apple. And I, I said to her, how are you going to do that? And she said, I'm going on Dr. Adkins for a whole week and I'm going to lose 10 pounds. That was 1973. And I said, what is, what is that? I'd never heard of it. She says, oh, honey, haven't you seen the book? And I said, no. The following day, she brought me the book. I took it home. I read it cover to cover. And I looked at my mom and I said, we're going on Dr. Adkins. Mom went to the grocery store and got hamburger meat, bacon, eggs, salad fixings, and pork chops. And for three months, I lived on a almost zero-carb diet. We never went up the carbohydrate ladder. We stayed at less than 10 grams a day. On weekends, I would have my dates, and they would take me to brunch, and we'd drink alcohol and eat croissants 
croissants and fruit and margaritas and huevos rancheros. And I would just eat until I couldn't eat anymore. And then on Monday, I'd go back on Dr. Adkins. Well, they call that cycling now. I was cycling at 18, 19. When I got back down and I lost all the weight, my mother lost the weight. We couldn't believe there was such a diet like this. And I moved out of California and I moved to Connecticut, which is pretty much nothing but Italians. And I got a job as a barmaid in an Italian club for men. And I only ended up eating one time a day because I wouldn't get home until four. I'd sleep till noon. Uh, one of the men would take me out to an Italian restaurant where I discovered escarole and broccoli rabi. Have you ever heard of those? Never. Well, they're a green vegetable uh, and they are full of nutrition and they would cook it in olive oil and tons of garlic and Italian sausage. And I started living on that. That was still at less than 10 grams of carbohydrate a day. And I lived on that until I moved out of New Haven and I moved down to Stamford, Connecticut. And that's when I started just eating meat because I couldn't even afford vegetables. I would eat meat and if someone took me on a date, I would eat shrimp or oysters or mussels. And so I pretty much started eating like that forever, forever. I didn't know any different. It was economical for me and it kept me thin. Then I got married. I had two children. And after the second child, I couldn't get the weight off. Of course, my, my husband was a drinker and I found that it was easy to drink <laughs> until you went to bed. And I ballooned again. And I went to the the gynecologist, I said, how do I get this weight off? She said, chicken wings, my dear, chicken wings and butter. Well, all of a sudden, I remembered that that's how I ate on Adkins. And I started eating like that. And I ate, I ate like that until 2012, 2013. And I went out to dinner for my 51st, 52nd birthday with my family. And it was one of those wonderful restaurants where the chef made all the food. And a woman would walk around with an iron skillet with homemade focaccia bread. And everyone in my family took a, a piece of focaccia bread. And I thought, what the hell? I'm going to have a piece of focaccia bread. She came around three times and all of us had three pieces of focaccia bread. I went home, went to bed at three in the morning. I was on the toilet heaving, heaving my guts out and exploding in diarrhea. It was so bad. My intestines were so inflamed that not only could I not stand up straight, but when I sat down, I had to go down real slowly and gently because it felt like my intestines were going to explode. That's when I realized I didn't have the enzymes to metabolize carbohydrates. I have no, no idea how they prepared that focaccia bread, but whatever was in it was total poison to me. So I realized I couldn't eat like that again, even though I'd been eating clean all those years. When I put something of a flour product in my body, I got deathly ill. So I have just re pretty much remained as close to zero carb all these years. And I know that if I try to eat like other people, I'm going to get deathly ill. I'm, I'm not going to be able to stand up straight. I'm not going to be able to sit down and I can't leave the house because I have to be near the toilet. So here I am at 68 years old. I have to be careful what I eat. I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink caffeine. I don't eat sugar. I don't eat grains. I, I don't even, I, I very rarely have a leafy green. If I'm going to have a vegetable, it's going to be onions, garlic, cabbage, cauliflower, and maybe a floret of broccoli or two, but I have to be careful 
because mm. my body get it rebels so bad i can't leave the house it, it's unfortunate that i can't go out to eat with other people and have dessert or a glass of wine or the fillers on the plate whether it's a rice peel off or broccoli i can't eat like that and forget dating forget dating you when when you talk on the phone with somebody and you tell them that you have to go to a restaurant that serves seafood and or meat but you can't have the fillers they say well i don't eat red meat it's unhealthy well there goes that one out the window <laughs> so i can't date unless i can find someone that eats like me uh, I, I can't go to dinner parties because I can't be rude. I found that if I had the dinner parties, then I could do my socializing if I did the cooking. And I would make maybe cauliflower au gratin or rice cauliflower pilaf, and nobody knew any different. Mm. So I find that socializing is difficult. Cruises are easy. I can pretty much go to one of those all you can eat meat restaurants that way i don't have to have the mashed potatoes or the salad bar but i can't go to a spanish restaurant with the rice and beans and i can't go to the italian restaurant because they bred the eggplant or they bred the chicken or the veal so you know in a way we're restrictive in that way but in the other way we're so healthy and we've slowed the aging process down. I mean, I'm not even on medication. I can't wait to tell you my numbers. Hold on. Let me get my... Oh, yes. I'd love to hear about that. I just had my coronary artery calcium scan. My mm. At 68 years old, my scan came back 12. Oh, wow. Yes. They say anything under 100 is very healthy. Mm. Let me get my blood work. I just had oh, that wow. done. Oh, Can nice. I put in a plug for my doctor? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, everyone's on the lookout for someone that might be uh, keto or my carnival doctor, friendly. He's a jewel. Dr. Michael McKenna in Hollandale Beach, Florida. I believe he also has an office in either Coral Springs or Pembroke Pines. But when he saw my numbers and a lot of these blood test places come back from Tampa, they, they say out of range. You're, they, they say you're so dangerous. Hmm. Anyway, where's my blood work? Here we go. Here we go. My triglycerides. By the way, I was not fasting when they did this. I had had breakfast. I'd had a cup of tea. My hmm. triglycerides were 292. Oh, wow. And I think most doctors would say that's death. My yeah, but, uh, that would give the doctor a heart attack, right? <laughs> not Dr. Kenna. Uh, my HDL cholesterol is 41. My, my fasting triglycerides were 53. My oh. LDL cholesterol calcium was 139. And my total cholesterol count was 233. Dr. McKenna does not say, honey, you need a statin. He says, excellent, Eve. <laughs> nice. So it's does Dr. Nice Barry. He says the same thing. High hmm. cholesterol uh, will prevent you from cancer and a stroke. Dr. Hmm. McKenna says, excellent, Eve. So any other doctor that would see this would either force me on a statin or would not allow me back in his office. So, uh, yeah, the do any other doctor would literally say, if you're not going to take the statin, you're fired as a patient, right? Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's so, nice. So I'll, I'll, if he's got a website, I'll link to it in the description as well. So, yeah. So I've got, I've got lots of questions, if that's okay. <laughs> so... Um, if we could just go back a little bit, um, you said after the car accident, the doctor had said, like, you're going to suffer arthritis. Is that right? I broke uh, my pelvic bone. Ah, and okay. 
he said, it's going to come and bite you in the ass. And sure enough, in 1997, everybody in the world got desktop computers and you had to sign in and it went right into an AOL chat room. Hmm. And back then, uh, what year was it? Yeah, 1997, I got into chat rooms. Uh, I was with someone that was an alcoholic and loved sweet martinis. And of course, I followed suit and I ballooned during that time. And when that affair ended, I was huge. My teeth were loose. My gums were spongy. Both both of my hips were down to the bone. I couldn't walk. I was on two canes. Uh, when I was in the house, I walked on a walker. Out in public, I used two canes to walk. Um, I was in really bad shape then. That was, what, 2000. In 2008, well, in 2006, my dentist, my hygienist, used to shove antibiotic chips under my gums because my gums were so bad and my teeth were loose. I'd lost three teeth in that car accident. And so, of course, all of that was getting spongy. And the dentist said, honey, you're going to have to go to a periodontist. Uh, you, you, you need to see a specialist. And then the orthopedic surgeon was saying, you need hip replacements. You, you're, you're in bad shape. Um, so I went to the dentist and he said, we're going to have to pull all your teeth and put in dentures. That's the only thing that's going to help you. When the hygienist would clean my teeth, she'd use that numbing stuff and she would do my gums with this numbing stuff just so she could clean my teeth because it hurt so bad. Uh, the, the orthopedic surgeon said, when would you like to have surgery? Well, in 2008, I had my first hip replacement, the right one. And he said, when you're healed and you're feeling better, we'll do the, right, the left one. And I said, okay, anything to get out of this excruciating pain. Well, about 2006, though, see, I started going into these forums and I started learning about carnivore as a lifestyle. Here I was eating like that, except I was drinking a lot of of alcohol I, I i parrot my companions mm. the alcohol was killing me killing me my mother was an alcoholic and i was going down that same road and i thought God, i've got to save my life so i got into these forums and i discovered this forum and it was called the magic bus has anyone ever told you about it no never heard of it no well, the guy that ran it, his name was Dean, and he was just a challenge beast. And he and his friend Jeff did this 30-day challenge. They had to consume 5,000 calories a day, strictly carnivore and dairy, animal-based food. At the end of 30 days, they, were, they would talk about well, they would talk about it daily, and all of us were all eyes reading the forum. And they were saying how hard it was to get to 5,000 calories. So they had to chug heavy whipping cream and eat steak, sticks of butter. And all of us are thinking, is that what we have to do? Well, at the end of 30 days, they did not gain a pound. They got leaner. They didn't lose any weight. But they were starting to see the definition in their chest and their hips and their belly. I mean, they were losing belly fat like crazy. And I thought, well, if they can do that, I can do that. <laughs> well, I didn't do, I didn't do the five thousand calories, but I stuck with the meat. I got rid of the alcohol, and then all of a sudden, miracle started. My gums got tighter. My teeth were locked into tight gums. When I had the surgery on my right hip and I started healing and walking, the doctor says, are you ready to do the left hip? And I said, well, no, I don't have any pain. He said, well, if you don't have any pain, we don't need to do it. I saved that hip for 10 years. From 2008 to 2018, I never 
had a problem with that hip. But in 2018, all of a sudden, the bone started exposing itself through my hip, through uh, the, the hip plate. And I ended up having that one replaced. So I have two titanic, titanium, titanic, two titanium <laughs> hips. And I still have, the, I, I'm only on the second set of crowns since the accident at 18. So I have gotten more longevity out of my crowns than most people get. Also, at the age of 51, I had to start wearing glasses. I am 68. Do you know that prescription has never changed? Oh, wow. So you've never had to get anything stronger. Wow. Same prescription since 51. Two titanium hips. No medication. And I don't go to the gym. I'm not a gym rat. I, I mm. enjoy the bicycle and i live in sunny south florida so i ride my bicycle on the beach pretty much daily i get i get lots of vitamin d uh i've never had a problem with calcium all my numbers are beautiful except the cholesterol is sky high which would scare any other doctor except mm. dr mckenna so i i I'm just a walking miracle. I mean, I've had other miracles, like my hair has grown back in real thick. Um, I got rid of all the broken blood vessels around my nose and the ankles. Hmm. I, I don't have the arthritis that I had in the shoulders or the ankles. Uh, menopause, menopause. I never knew I was in menopause. My, oh, my, wow. menses, my menses stopped and... I didn't have any symptoms like other women. I remember being at Starbucks one afternoon with my best friend and she was buying us coffee and she was standing there to give the lady the money. And I watched this sweat bead go out of her hair, down her nose and drip off of her nose. And I said, Annie, what's wrong with you? She says, wait till you have hot flashes didn't never wow no menopause symptoms that's amazing Ooh. i know i am a 35 year old walking around in a 68 year old body mm. so uh, i i i can't get off the um the arthritis and thinking about the hip replacements and stuff like that so I mean, I uh, my grandmother had hip replacements, but at the time she had the hip replacements, it was when I was living overseas, and and so I didn't really see what life was like for her at that time. But my understanding of her situation, and also of other people I've heard of, when they have a hip replacement, they kind of that's it; things kind of degrade after that. But you're saying you're you're out riding bicycles every day. After the third day after surgery of my second hip replacement, I was in the grocery store because there was a big sale on prime rib. Mm. And I had to get to that damn grocery store and get me one of those huge standing rib roasts. Wow. Third day after surgery, I was in the grocery store buying standing rib roasts. Okay. And I have a girlfriend that can testify because I had a girlfriend come up and stay with me for that surgery because I thought I was going to be incapacitated for three weeks. No, we were at the grocery store uh, uh, the third day. Wow. That's, uh, that's awesome. The All only right. thing that said to me was, you can't bungee jump and you can't jump out of a plane. That's what he <laughs> told me. Okay, and so you've avoided those two things? So far. So far. <laughs> you you look like you could so be far. tempted. You look like you could be talked into it. Yeah. For sure. Well, my kids, my kids are Oh, oh, and after the after the first after the first hip replacement, which was in September, 
me and my kids went on a Christmas cruise and we went to Ro Roatan, Roatan, Roatan. And we were doing, what do you do that? Uh, you, zip lining. We were doing zip lining through the forest. And my son says, I can't believe you're zip lining after a hip replacement. You're so cool, mom. Yes. So, so just to, just to clarify, um, your marriage, I think you said, was around 1999. So your kids would be about mid-20s now. Is that right? Mid-20s? Um, no. Uh, one was born in 83 and one was oh. born in 92. So one's 39 and one is 30, 31. Okay. Okay. And, um, and uh, it's just amazing when you think like your kids, you're basically, you're keeping up with your kids or maybe they're keeping up with you. They're keeping up with me. Yeah. Uh huh. Wow. And I taught them, I taught them both how to eat because that was the only way I ate. And my daughter has given me two grandsons and she has them eating exactly like me. They, they love their bacon and eggs. They love their lamb. They love their burgers. They love their fish. They love their oysters and mussels. Uh, one of them loves sushi. Wow. Oh, nice. We, you know, growing up back in the 60s, we never ate fast food. We never ate pizza. Mm -hmm. And my children are the same way. They don't eat pancakes. They don't eat bagels and croissants they do not eat box cereal they do not eat sugar i remember we went to a uh, one of those country bars down in nashville we were all living there they're still there and one of the bus boys came over and asked us if he could give the babies a little scoop of ice cream and my daughter went and I said, it's just a little scoop of ice cream. And they gave the little, the, the older one at the time he was, uh, what, four years old, gave him a little scoop of ice cream in one of those little tiny, little tiny pill cups. Hmm. Within 30 minutes, he was uh, beating up the, uh, the baby. He was going stark raving mad. Um, we had to take him outside for a timeout. You should have seen what the sugar did. It made him ballistic. And we saw this with our very own eyes. So when I'm in the grocery store and I see these kids acting like holy terrors, I can't help but say out loud, I bet you had cereal this morning. Mm. Yeah. You can see the, the monsters when they consume sugar versus the children that don't eat sugar what a difference and you know they allow these kids to eat this stuff in schools no wonder they have all these kids that are hdad or what adhd hmm. they're, they're lunatics on sugar uh, i was watching a video recently and they were talking about the um the kind of the school lunches that are provided at some of the schools and it's like lunchables or something. And that's basically just a, a plastic <laughs> box full of processed sugary food, right? Cookies, crackers, processed American cheese slices, bananas, uh, sherbet, mm. ice cream, uh, brownies, lots of cereal in the little, little tiny packs. Speaking of the little tiny packs, back in 2012, I was at the grocery store and I was at the cashier and they have these little bags of potato chips and Fritos and they're, I don't know, half ounce and it was 50 cents and I used to love Fritos and I thought, I'll, I'm going to get a little, little bag of Fritos. I'm dying to have some Fritos. And I bought them with my groceries and on the way home, which is 10 minutes back home, I opened the bag and I ate my Fritos. And I was like, oh God, they taste exactly like I remember them. An hour later, I was on the toilet with the runs. 
It's scary how quickly you can react to this stuff, right? When I'm on the beach and I'm riding my bicycle, we have a broadwalk. Uh, it's paved and we have a bike lane. And then we have the pavement where everybody walks. I live in a beach resort town. And if you look out over the people sitting on the beach, it's like being at the beach gives them permission to eat a whole bag of potato chips and you see them holding the bag and emptying the last of the crumbs in their mouth or they sit and eat the whole container of pringles it's like normally you'd think they would a lot of so much to put in their daily lunch to go to work but at the beach it gives them permission to eat the whole bag where when you're eating like you are now or i am now it's also you feel like you you've taken that step back and you can kind of look at it and and just think this is awful what are they doing to themselves you know yes uh, yes yes so, well, so uh, I'll, I'll go i'll go a little further at the end of, <laughs> at the end of on a on a monday morning the trash receptacles at the beach are overflowing with junk uh, food bags, pizza boxes, uh, Wendy's bags. But then in the winter, when the Canadians come, we get 300,000 Canadians who come and live with us for the winter, our snowbirds. The receptacle, the trash receptacles are empty. They're empty Be because what they do is they'll bring their lunch, an apple or a banana, and their beer to the beach but they wrap all their garbage back up and take it back to their motel room and dispose of it our trash receptacle show no junk food hmm. in the summer when we get all the people from miami and out west who come and spend the whole day on the beach the the garbage receptacles are just overflowing with fast food interesting wow it really Yes, it really is. Wow. It sounds, a little, it sounds a little bit Japanese of the Canadians. <laughs> it sounds like a little bit what, like what Japanese people are like here. Yeah. Anthropologists, sociologists would have a field day mm. studying the culture here in our area. Yeah. Wow. So can you can you paint the picture for us? Can you tell us a little bit like what uh what is a day like for you eve like a day of eating and then maybe what else you're up to like I, riding the bike and all that kind of thing that's easy uh i get up and take care of the cats and i go out outside and i sit for an hour in the sun dr cruz says download that vitamin d so i i go outside and i sit from 8 to 9 a.m if i don't have to work uh, that that morning, uh, then I get on my bicycle and I ride on the beach for another hour li listening to music and get more sun. And I do not wear sunscreen. I, then I come home and I usually have a big, huge piece of meat. It could be my meatloaf. It could be pork chops. It could be bacon and eggs. It could be a ribeye. It could be a New York steak. What else do I, I love? I love pork chops too. Uh, or a great big, huge bacon cheeseburger patty uh, with may maybe mushrooms, which is fungi. It's perfectly norm safe to eat fungi. Um, that'll last me anywhere from six to nine hours. And then what I'll do is before it gets dark, I'll have my second meal and it's usually much lighter. I'm not that hungry. I can have a, I'll have a, a whole wheel of brie with uh, maybe some pork rinds. I might have a small cheeseburger. I might have a couple of homemade meatballs. Um, I might even have a sausage, a, a sausage like a Italian sausage or chorizo, mm -hmm. German sausage, whatever. There is in the freezer and that's that's my day and then if i have to go to work uh, i do eat breakfast or i wait until i go to work to have breakfast 
and I bring two or three fried eggs and a bunch of bacon, you know, fill something up and eat that. I, I love scrambled eggs with cheese and bacon in it. Uh, or leftover steak from the day before, I'll cut up and put in my scrambled eggs. And then if I have to work the night shift where I don't get home until 7.38, about 4 o'clock I will pull out a hunk of cheese and eat it with uh, pork rinds. Oh, but nice. my, second, my second meal is very light. My first meal is very large, very large. Mm. And between the two meals, it can be anywhere between six and nine hours. So, I mean, it sounds perfect. <laughs> lots of eggs, lots of steak, lots of bacon, lots of, it sounds, lots of pork. Awesome. Wow. And so. And I cook everything. I cook everything in either bacon fat the uh if i cook a, a pecana which is um i don't know what they call it in english but in spanish it's uh i guess a sirloin cap and that produces a lot of fat and i save that and i pour that into the bacon fat too i mean it's a community fat bowl and uh i will cook everything eggs either in the bacon fat tallow or in a huge mess of butter but there's got to be a lot of fat. If there isn't a lot of fat, like on a New York strip steak, there isn't a lot of fat. I actually, in fact, I got the jar sitting on the counter now. I, I'll eat several tablespoons of coconut oil. Mm. I've already had three tablespoons of coconut oil this morning. Oh, nice. And you said you're working and sometimes doing night shift. I work uh, for some wholesalers. Right. And I work 15 hours a week. I either have the morning, which is 10 to 2, or the afternoon, 4 to 7. Mm. That's okay. the night shift. Nice. And it's so, too late to eat. You you sound like, so riding the bike, getting lots of um, sun every day, you're working, you're, you know, you sound as bright as you – you don't typify the the image I have in my mind of someone who's had a double hip replacement. So, like, um, I love loud concerts. Nice. So, so I mean, it doesn't sound like you're slowing down. It, it sounds more like you're <laughs> ramping things up. So, like, how do you feel? Do you like, you know, just? I want to try new stuff. I want to do new things. I want to experience. Like it, it, the best way I could I describe it is just talking to you. It's like you want to grab life like this. I am a 35 year old and a 68 year old body. I, I dance around the house. I ride my bicycle and sing along to the music and wave to the neighbors. Uh, I flirt with the tourists on the boardwalk. I, I sit in Margaritaville on my laptop and I do stuff in there. Um, uh, but, you know, it all comes from the energy of how clean I'm eating. Mm. I don't get, I don't have that caffeine what it, where they bomb out when the caffeine runs out. I don't have any of that. I, and I sleep really well and I dream like crazy. Mm. Everybody's in my dream. My dreams are always with so many people. <laughs> It's like you're on a cruise or something in your dream. So, um, like, um, how how much sleep are you getting each day? <laughs> well, last I, I I I just I just finished watching that Queen Charlotte. I think it's on Netflix, and that just hit me so hard emotionally because of the love and the tragedy that I had to go back and watch the older series of Briggerton. Mm. And last night I didn't get in bed until midnight and I forced myself to go to bed because I knew I was going to see you and I still had to ride my bicycle this morning. Um, but I try to get in bed by nine and I'm up by five. But when I'm enthralled in something or I'm at a concert or I'm socializing, I won't get to bed until midnight and I'm up at seven. And I oh, sleep okay. through the night. Mm. I sleep through the night. Nice. I sleep soundly. 
I live in a very loud city, loud. There's massive amounts. <laughs> of so, and I don't know if you can hear, I have the windows open, which is very rare for May in South Florida, but the humidity is low. It's breezy. The sky is Robin's egg blue. I mean, it's oh, gorgeous, nice. but when I sleep with the windows open, I have to put earplugs in because of the sirens and the kids that drive around with real loud rap music. So I have to sleep with earplugs, but I can't have my sleep disturbed. No siree. Ah, uh, okay. So your your Netflix binging last night explains that a question I had for you because I sent you an email just to say hey, looking forward to talking tomorrow. And I wasn't expecting a reply like shortly after I sent it, but I did get a reply. So that's why you were still up. You were you were watching Netflix. Uh-huh. Yes, okay. I, I, I was totally enthralled with those romance novels on TV. Mm. Nice. What are some of the things that you would say to someone who's starting on an eating eating plan like this? or considering starting on an eating plan like this? Well, you know, when I'm at the, at the store and people walk in and their kids are jumping out of their skin and I ask them to please control their kids so they don't break anything, um, I ask, I'll ask the children, did you have cereal this morning? And I had one woman who told me that her 13-year-old daughter and her seven-year-old son are type two diabetic. I so, had sorry, young- seven-year-old son. Seven-year-old <gasps> son and thirteen-year-old daughter wow. are both type two diabetic, and I, I, I uh, you know, I, I'm blown away that this is allowed. This is allowed, and why these doctors aren't putting them their kids on low carb. I, and then I have a young man come in who wanted me to sign one of those uh, petitions to legalize marijuana and we got to talking and it just so happens when he came in I was on the computer and I was listening to YouTube and I had who knows Dr. Gundry the heart doctor Chaffee who knows who I was listening to I listened to all of them and he came in and he said he said my my boyfriend's nutritionist wants us to buy a $600 blender and start juicing for our health. And my grandma is type two diabetic. And that's when I raised the volume on YouTube. And I said, listen to this. And after 30 minutes, he says, you mean I can reverse type two diabetes? I said, you can get rid of it. I said, didn't your doctor tell your grandmother? No. He told her she's got it for life. Mm. So I hear these stories and some people, when I tell them that they can improve their health, save their teeth, get off of medication, their eyes kind of cloud over because they think you're a lunatic. And then there are a few that actually listen to you. Now with the girls, the girls who are vain by birth, I guess, I tell them I have no cellulite on the backs of my legs. My legs do not look like cottage cheese. I am lean and I don't work out at the gym. And they go, how do you do that? Well, it's because of the way I eat. And I eat a lot of saturated fat. Oh, I can't eat saturated fat. I'll get sick. And I remember, I think it was Dr. Adkins. I think it was him that I read. Don't quote me, but he said, if you can remember that your body is nearly 100 degrees, 98.6, your body is nearly 100 degrees. When was the last time you saw butter or bacon fat solid at 100 degrees? There is no way saturated fat stays solid and clogs arteries in your body. It's impossible. But, you know, they, they, they get that, that clouding over. The, oh, yeah, okay, well, what, you know, I have neighbors downstairs that are both very sick. 
And I kept, uh, and I've been telling them for years that I'm on meat only, meat only. In the meantime, her husband is on more and more medication. Well, someone told them they should go low carb. Well, to them, the low carb they're doing is 50 to 75 grams of carbohydrate a day. They're still eating breaded chicken and they're still eating rice. Hmm. Yeah, He's if there's if there's medication. room for rice, if there's room for rice and bread, it's not low carb. <laughs> That's just uh, it. They've known me for twenty years, and they've seen me, and they see I haven't changed, and I'm not sick. In fact, you know, I I have the last time I got sick was August of two thousand seven. I got some violent thirty hour flu. Mm. That was the last time I was sick. Right. Yeah. 2007. How long ago was that? Eight, nine, 10, 14 years ago? Mm. Uh, hang on. Yeah, 14. Yeah. About 14 years ago. I haven't been sick in 14 years. I mean, I'll get allergy wow. with the windows open and the pollen because all of our trees now are flowering. Mm. Oh, 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 here, here's, this, here's, here's something I can tell. I, I'd love to share with you. Sure, go in ahead. Two, in 2016, um, I, I have the Greek blood in me, and a lot of Greeks have large breasts, large breasts, so large that you can't find cotton shirts to button. You can't find uh -oh. a bathing suit to cover it. It's almost humiliating. I mean, men love it, women cry. And I was a crybaby. I flew down to Costa Rica where I got me a breast reduction in 2016. He took out one and a half pounds out of one and two pounds out of the other. That's mammoth. Hmm. And while I was in the resort where I stayed, it's a hotel for patients. While I was there, three young girls came in from different parts of America. All three of them came in to have all their teeth pulled, all their teeth pulled, and dentures all put in and implants put in, implants. And I asked, and I asked them what their ages were. There was one that was 26, one that was 31, and one that was 35. And I said, wow, wow why are you having all your teeth pulled? And they said, I guess it's because of all of the 7-Eleven Slurpees and fast foods that I would grab before school or grab after school. So all these kids from the 1980s, 90s, I don't know about 2000s, but from the 1980s and the 1990s, they have all been living on processed, fast, mm. cheap food. Nobody taught them how to eat properly. And there were these young girls getting their teeth pulled, pulled. It's crazy. I know it was, I, I was, I was shocked, shocked. Mm. Having all their teeth pulled and implants put in. It, and but, it's cheaper in Costa Rica than in America. Mm. This processed food and the sugar and stuff it's it just wrecks your teeth and gums like and it doesn't and matter it, how much you brush it doesn't matter it how is. much care you pay to it. it it's just if you're eating sugar and processed food it's going to destroy your teeth and gums um and I mean, my experience is very similar to yours. Although I think you were in a, yours, your teeth were in perhaps a worse state than mine. But um, when uh, when I started eating this way, it was almost instant. The gums just repaired themselves. The teeth got stronger. Um, the bleeding stopped. The bad breath stopped. It's when my hygienist retired. My dentist and my hygienist were married and they retired together, which meant I had to find a new dentist and a new hygienist. And in 2012, 2011, I had to go find me a new dentist, which meant I had to go through the whole examination. So 
the hygienist was in the chair with the probe and probing all of my pockets and she would call out the tooth number and the pocket size. And she had an assistant sitting next to her that was charting all this. Hmm. Now, back in 2005, I was hearing six, seven. There's too many holes in her, in her gums. In 2011, 2012, I was hearing zero, one, zero, one, one. I started laughing maniacally. I started laughing. I, I was giddy. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And the hygienist stopped and she says, what are, you, what are you laughing about? What's so funny? I said, if you could have heard the hygienist in 2005, 2006, you would be bowling over yourself. I said, she, they wanted to rip all my teeth out. She says, wow, your teeth are like a 14-year-old. What, what did you do? And I said, I don't eat sugar. I don't eat gluten. And I don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. She goes, I've heard about the gluten. Why do you think it is? I mean, I'm not, I don't know how much dentists must realize how bad sugar is for your teeth. But so why why is it that dentists and doctors don't advise more to go on a low carb diet? It's just the money. Yeah. They need the patients. And yeah. with this all we're in America now, with all of this HMO. They have to see so many patients a day and they only get paid what the HMO or the insurance companies will pay them. They, they're not rich, rich, rich like they were in the 50s, 60s and the 70s. The plastic surgeons now are the rich, rich, rich. But your MD and your orthopedic surgeon, they only get paid what the insurance company is going to pay them. So they oh. have to double up. I mean, they get when when I have a telephone, uh, what is it, uh, interview with my doctor when we go and talk about my numbers because, you know, I called him and I said I need to talk to you. I said, why is my why is my blood pressure? Why can't I get my blood pressure down to ninety? And he says, but E, you're sixty eight years old. That's golden. <laughs> mm. And here I'm thinking I'm supposed to be somewhere around 70 or 80. No, he says I'm good up to what, 100, 200? So, so actually, sorry, what is what, here? What was your blood pressure? Um, I, let's see, where's my dot here? I have my blood pressure. It's usually about 117 over 85. Oh, so that's that's good. That's really Golden. good. Yeah. Golden. But see, you know, you hear, well, it's supposed to be 110 over, what, 70 or something like that. So here I'm automatically thinking, oh, my God, am I sick? Am I sick? Am I old? But we we'll tell other people about what my, my cholesterol is. They go, oh, my doctor wants mine at 140 or 150. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, if you think about it, a 14-year-old, a 28-year-old that does hard labor and a 90-year-old, they all shouldn't be at 110 blood pressure mm -hmm. or cholesterol under 200. I mean, you have different bodies, different ages, different activity levels. Why should we all be the same cholesterol rating? Yeah. Look at all, look at, look at, the, the, uh, there are now, facilities that are the size of Walmart, super Walmart for people with dementia. Mm. There are facilities that are hundreds of thousands of square feet in Henderson or Homestead, Florida that are housing dementia patients. And why are they all full of dementia? Hmm. What is that they say? That's type 3? Type 3 diabetes. diabetes. Yeah, yeah. Doctors are calling it. Mm. Why are they all, why are all of them losing their memories? Yeah. Someone says it's like Swiss cheese. Their brains are like Swiss cheese. There's all these holes in it. Mm. Why? So you, you actually raised uh, what I think is a really interesting point there when you said that 
most doctors are calling it type 3 diabetes and i agree they are and i think that's probably accurate um but then why are more doctors not recommending people get off sugar <laughs> it right it's like yeah dementia is type 3 well, diabetes you you got to eat more uh, whole grains and pasta people people that are properly educated who are listening to people like you and Dr. Chaffee and Dr. Jack Cruz and Dr. Sean Baker and all of these doctors who are their own living experiment. They're, they are starting to understand the dangers of the American diet or the standard American diet of sugar, margarine, vegetable oils, uh, corn. In fact, one doctor said, what was it last week? That chickens, I don't know if it was on your, one of your podcasts, but he called chickens now walking corn cobs because they are fed nothing but soy and corn. Yeah, I don't think it was Chick on mine, but yeah, basically, yeah, I've heard that before as well, yeah. Well, chickens are walking corn cobs. Hmm. Think about that. Hmm. So I can't, being that I am on Social Security and I can only work so many hours a month in order to keep my benefits that I have, um, I can't afford grass-fed farmer's meat. And we don't have that down here in South Florida. It would have to be shipped from Nebraska or Idaho or Wyoming to me. I can't afford that expensive grass-fed meat. So I have to depend on Walmart because the food card I get through my Medicare will only allow me to buy food at Walmart. So I have to buy my meat there. If I see grass-fed, I will grab it. I will. Mm. But the majority of the food is not grass-fed. It is commercial corn cob, soy-fed meat. And I'm doing the best that I can by getting my son and my exercise and trying to eat as little, what do you call it? Uh, I, I eat mushrooms, right. onions, mm. garlic cabbage i mean cabbage is a great filler and mm. um but i can't afford the expensive food yeah. i mean i think the thing that the, the the important thing is you just do the best that you can towards uh, towards a carnivore diet that you can and that's always going to be a million times better than just going back to a regular half the, american diet half the battle, you know? half the battle. Mm. You know, of course, it'd be great for it's great if we can all afford grass fed and grass finished food, uh, meat, but uh, you know, it's often not easily available or too expensive. And you know, you know, I was fortunate that my father came from another country and he and I were the only ones in the family that ate awful. And he and I would go on weekends and we'd get our chicken gizzards and our chicken hearts. Uh, Dad would make, he'd get beef brains and make brains and scrambled eggs. I mean, we ate awful. And mm. most Americans won't touch that stuff. So I was lucky that my father turned me on to other cuts of meat uh, living here, I, I live amongst a melting pot of cultures. So it's nothing for me to go and get goat meat or oxtail, uh, beef cheeks. I'm always mm. complaining at my meat market. They never have enough beef cheeks. Uh, they say, well, nobody buys them. Yes, I'm the only one. And then the Hispanics will. Mm. So, you know, I, I go and hunt. I have to save. I have to save money when I uh, every three months I save enough money. I can go to the meat market and go and get, you know, a whole New York strip loin and have it sliced into thirteen steaks, and then I freeze them all. You should see my refrigerator. 
The refrigerator is pretty much empty except for the leftover foods for the meals when I work. And my freezer is completely stocked with meat, bacon, um, pork chops, th chicken thighs. Oh, nice. I wish I wish they would make refrigerator freezers where the freezer was larger than the refrigerator cavity. But, you know, most people have all the condiments and all the fruits and vegetables, and they need the large cavities. But people like me, we need the large freezers, and I, I, right. and I can't put a end-up <laughs> freezer in my little condo, not to mention during hurricane season. What if I lose power for two weeks? Mm. That's a good point, yeah, yeah. Because it gets pretty wild down there, right? Um, not so much on the East Coast. The last bad hurricane I think we had here was probably Irma, which was back in early 2000s. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I was here for Andrew in 92, and I was here for the five that came blow, blowing through here in 2005. There was like Ivan, Charlie, Rita, Francis, Jeannie. It was pretty bad. It was pretty mm. bad. But you learn... You learn to have sardines in the uh, in the cupboard or canned tuna or something during, or, or even spam and canned corned beef. Mm. You have all that in the cupboards for your hurricane outages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to make mention. I I saw one of your babies just walk behind you there. One of the cats. <laughs> how how how, how, many, how many cats do you have? I have two, two senior uh, cats. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, and they nice. get psyllium husk in all of their meals because uh, it was the long hair that went by. Um, as the cat gets older, they get more constipated, and it, mm. it's very dangerous for the cats. They get impacted. So I put psyllium husk in powder in all their food so that they have regular bowel movements and very, very, very few hairballs are coughed up. Oh, no. You have to give them, otherwise you go to the vet and you get real expensive high fiber cat food, which I can't afford. So mm. they get powdered psyllium husk in their food every day. And then when I go to the litter box, I, I say, oh, you guys did so well. Because I see big turds, so I know <laughs> that they're healthy as well. They're healthy nice. as well. Nice. But, you know, they, they have to eat. They they don't like meat. They like their canned food and their dry food. So, yeah. But they're uh -huh. healthy. They're good. And mm. they're, they're old, uh, 12 and 9. Oh, okay. We've got, a, we've got a one and a half year old here. She's a little uh, white Scottish fold. You know, Cat? Fold it. Yeah, folded oh, over ears. Short hair uh she's kind of a medium medium hair cat does she cough up a lot of hairballs no no i'm surprised oh. actually yeah because her hair goes everywhere but yeah well if you see hairballs start thinking about psyllium husk okay Cheers. i put it I, I i take the psyllium husk and i put it in my spice ground grinder mm. and i I blend it until it's just a powder. It's easily digested. And they lick it off the food. Whereas if it's still in granules, it'll fall to the bottom of the dish. But if you start seeing hairballs, think about psyllium husk. Mm. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that was that was very cute there. The the cat was just making this little beeline for the other side of the room it's like i'm going behind mummy so um I, i'm interested to find <laughs> out <laughs> how did you how did you um find me because you uh you contacted me the other day like how did well you i've been following me? you yeah uh, and listening to the other people that have only been doing this two years, three years, and seeing miracles, I thought, why don't you hear from someone who's been doing it almost their entire life, since mm. the age of 18? And, you know, 
I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the bear. I can't. Uh, Oswald, Oswald Stanley, I think he was the sound man for the Grateful Dead back in the 60s and 70s. He was a lifelong carnivore as well. And mm -hmm. he went on one of those diet forums on the Internet and told his story. And he was ridiculed so bad by people who said, you know, you need plant, you need fiber. Well, he's not a cat and he doesn't cough up hairballs. So fiber was irrelevant. Fiber was irrelevant. But I read his story and I, I could relate to what he said because I've been eating this way all my life as well. Hmm. I don't know any other way to eat. I don't know. Like I said, I started at the age of 18 with Dr. Adkins and no carbs, very little carbs. I know no other way to eat. So to me, this is the natural way for man to eat is, I mean, if you read anthropology history books, we started as nomads. Man started as nomads. We didn't have farms. We lived in caves in the winter. We followed the herds waiting for the sick one or the injured one to fall behind. And we grabbed whatever we could off that animal before the large predators came and swooped down. So we, and what did we grab? We grabbed everything closest to the bone, mm. the organs. We made soup out of the bone marrow. Uh, the women took the hides and made clothing for her tribe and the men. And that's another thing I try to explain to people. Look at the difference between the female and the male body. The male body was created to be the warrior with stamina and endurance because he had to go out and get the animal. And the animal wasn't right outside the cave. He had to travel miles. And in order to avoid incest, he was also welcomed into other tribes where he took a woman and impregnated her. And that's how they kept the incest down. So you've got the women that were the gatherers, and it wasn't just berries and fruit that she gathered and nuts. She gathered the, the bones. She made pemmican. She, she dried the, the meat out on rocks. She pounded it into powder and mixed it with fat. And that's what they lived on in winter when they couldn't go out and follow the, the, the herds. I mean, you know, it's all logical. Why, why is it that people don't think logically? Hmm. But that's, that's the way first man ate. And first man didn't have cavities until they started to farm. And weren't the far, were, were the farmers the Neolithic or the Paleolithic when they started farming and corralling animals and growing grass? That's when we started to see disease. Hmm. It's all just logical. You know, read your anthropology books. Yeah. The, but the what? the proponents of a plant based diet just don't want to see it. They, whether it's deliberately or or not, they just don't want to see it, right? Well, from my understanding, the plant based diet began with the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Mm. It was religious reasons. It wasn't to save the chicken or the goat. It was for religious reasons yeah. and not all of us follow religion mm. so if you can separate religion from diet maybe they will start thinking for themselves and seeing that they're not well people oh boy are you going to get the hate mail on that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but um, but I found you because I've been following you I've been YouTube is like a holy Bible. You know, back in the 70s, you'd go to the library and sit in the aisles with mountains of books. You'd sit for hours doing your research and writing stuff. Now I, I just Google it or I go on YouTube and I listen to all of you. I listen to you. You make sense. You're logical. What happened to logic in this world? Yeah, I, I ask myself that often. <laughs> why are there so many stupid humans hmm. you know all you have to do is uh experiment for yourself be your own experiment 
I've been my own experiment for 50 years. I know what works and I know what makes me violently ill. My daughter for, for a Christmas gift, she paid for one of those Feast of the Seven Fish, the Italian Christmas dinner. And, she and, and they asked her, are there any dietary restrictions? And my daughter said, my mother and I are gluten-free. Please adhere to that. They didn't adhere to it. And by the third course, I got this severe migraine, the most severe migraine I had ever encountered. My daughter had to help me into the car, take me home, and help me into my bed. I couldn't finish the dinner. It was tainted with something. They did not really give a shit that I was allergic to something in their food. And I'm sure they, you know, there are people that will say, well, it was Italian. What did you expect? Well, it was supposed to be the seven fish, seven courses of seafood. Hmm. What's the next challenge for Eve? Like, do you have, would you like to, would you like to travel more? Would you like to see more of the U S would you like to go overseas? I've been to Ireland. Ireland was mm. good. That, that was an experience because I, I couldn't eat the food in Ireland. So I survived on the different fish chowders and brown soda breads with the fresh butter in all the villages. And the fish chowders were awesome and delicious, but they were all made with flour and butter and cream. I can't travel right now because I have the senior cats and like I say, I have to give them the psyllium husk and how do you tell a pet sitter to do all that? So I can't really travel right now. If I didn't have cats, I would, because my grandfather and my father were Greek, I can get dual citizenship. I, my fantasy has always been to move to the Greek islands because I could live on that di diet very easily. Uh, and as you can see, I'm an artist. I'm a painter. I would nice. live in on all the different islands. I would rent rooms on the different islands. I'd go down to the harbor. I would paint pictures and sell to the tourists. And then I would go and pig out on octopus and sardines and feta and olives and lamb and live like a queen all over. And I mentioned this on one of the Greek Facebook groups. And I said, can I, can I get very far on social security in the Greek islands? And the funny replies I got were, oh, we don't have good hospitals. We don't have hospitals on the islands. You would have to fly to Rhodes. I wasn't even thinking medical. I was thinking could I live on my paltry social security mm. and what I make off of my paintings in the Greek islands and eat like a queen? And they're thinking, well, you're a senior citizen. You're going to be sick. Mm. Yeah. I wasn't thinking like that. I don't think like that. I, it didn't even occur to me. Oh, I'm going to have to be near hospitals. And I hear that on, cause I, I join these dating sites. I'm trying to find yours truly. And I hear, Oh, I, I, I live here and I'm only 10 miles from the hospital. It's a good, good hospital. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think like that. Why, why do I need to live near a hospital? I guess they, they're afraid I'm going to have a heart attack or mm. blackout or have what sugar, sugar lows or sugar highs. I don't know. See, people don't, don't think like me mm. except for carnivores. That that's that's very interesting because you mentioned before as well, like you're a 35 year old in a 68 year old body, right? I I've only been doing this for a year, but I I almost feel like you're a newbie. Yeah, but I almost feel like I'm aging in reverse, and like I I was walking from the train station today to work and. The train, there was a bit of train trouble today and I was running late and I was like, oh, I can run, which, you know, a year ago I couldn't do. Um, and it was like, and this feels good too. It's not like this doesn't feel like I'm making an effort and you just feel so much younger. 
I, I truly believe that I have reversed or slowed the aging process down. When men meet me and they learn my age, they're shocked. They, I, I always hear, oh, my God, I, I could have sworn you were in your 40s. Women don't compliment you. Women don't say anything. Mm. But men, they're the ones that go, oh, my God, you look so good. I could have sworn you were in your 40s. A woman would never say that to me, ever. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> they don't. Men, when men see my art, uh, men just, oh, oh, my God, that is so beautiful. I have a neighbor that's downstairs that I've known for 20 years. She's never complimented my art. I don't understand the women-women women dynamics, whereas men say whatever comes out of their mouth. Women hold back. So speaking of your artwork, what is the what is the painting behind you? Is that of a particular island that you've uh, seen on a photo or been to? Or is this That's uh, Hollywood Greece? Beach. Hollywood That's Beach. That's Hollywood Beach. And that painting is six feet by three feet. Oh, wow. Nice. That's Hollywood Beach. And Hollywood Beach is... That's the only thing we have that's beautiful. It, um, we have palm trees. We have a boardwalk that we call the Broadwalk. We have lots of restaurants. And like I said, uh, in the winter, the Canadians come down and they keep our beach pristine. Mm. And then in the summer, we get the people from Dade County or way west Broward County, and they come and they trash the beach because they don't give a damn or their culture, they don't. Wherever they come from, I guess they don't have regular garbage pickup. When I <laughs> lived on the beach, when I lived on the beach, it was nothing for me to go out in the morning and find a soiled diaper and ashtrays dumped on the curb. Oh, wow. When I snorkeled, I, that's another thing. I don't even go in the ocean anymore. And I used to be a big swimmer, big mm. swimmer for hours. I don't go in the ocean anymore. The last time I went snorkeling, I had a soil diaper float past my face oh, no. and I, I had to ask that grossed me out. And then there was the other time I was out swimming and frolicking and the ocean was like glass. And I came out of the water and I pushed my hair out of my face. And I just happened to look down because I thought I felt a little fish nibble on my toe and I saw a human feces float past me. Oh, so somebody no. just, a person oh. just to the north of me just took a shit in the ocean. So, oh, no. <laughs> and when I, I have walked the beach for years collecting uh, beach glass, beautiful glass that's been uh, softened by the ocean rocks and sand. Now all you see is plastic, little bits of plastic, oh. and you think it's beach glass. And when you pick it up, it's bits of uh, plastic fragments. So mm. the ocean is polluted. Um, I don't swim in it anymore. But as I said, Hollywood Beach is a resort town and the city puts more money on the beach than anywhere. They keep the beach. They keep the seaweed off the beach. We have palm trees. And if a palm tree dies, they plant a new one. And we have neon lights in the, in the little wall to try to keep the sand from blowing onto the uh, boardwalk. It's a beautiful place to ride your bike. It's a beautiful place to vacation, but the people who live here, you know, we, we don't go in the ocean. We don't even sit on the beach anymore. Mm. If people want to get in touch with you or if people want to see your art, do you have a website or some kind of social media that they can get in touch with you? Oh, nice. That's Hollywood beach. Oh, nice. And I do prints, and that's what I do. That's what I do. Oh, very nice. I do pictures. I can I can take my framed pictures uh, to the beach when we have the tourists, and I sell them there. I hawk mm. them. I don't. I've never put an easel on the boardwalk and painted because it just I, I can't stand in the sun all day like that. Mm. I've never used suntan lotion or sunscreen. So I do try to limit my time in the sun. Like I say, hour in the morning, hour on the bike, that's plenty. But if mm. I'm out three or four hours, like when I used to snorkel, I used to have to wear a t-shirt so I wouldn't burn my back. 
Mm. But I know my limits. You know, yeah. I'm not. I'm not a fool. Yeah, I, I, I'm a, a bit like that. I have to know my limits if I'm out in the sun. But for me, with my complexion, it's about three and a half minutes at a time. <laughs> you, yeah, you do it gradually. You're a redhead. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Redheads. Yeah, they they have a tendency to have drier skin. You have to use more coconut oil and eat more yeah. fat. Keep the lanolin in your skin. But I do believe that eating all this fat keeps your joints lubricated and that's why i don't have any arthritis yeah i, I think that fat. is a big thing mm. i do i really do and i i don't know why my my gums hardened and got firmer around my teeth i don't know what it was i don't know what it was because i i never i've never eaten pizza and i don't eat submarine sandwiches I don't eat breads, but, and I really don't eat pasta, but if I were to indulge, it would probably be rice noodles, but I don't understand what could have loosened my teeth and made my gums spongy. I still don't have the answer unless mm. it was all the alcohol I was drinking because that's probably where I overdid. I, yeah. I became a lot. I was a lush when I was with my former partner. I, I drank like a fish and, he didn't eat red meat, so there was never any red meat around. Mm. I got real sick after that. So you, your diet took a hit in a lot of ways, right? Because it wasn't just the fact that you were drinking alcohol. Yeah, the meat the meat disappeared as well, right? Yeah. It did. Uh, yeah. That was but a, see, that taught, that taught me a lesson. That was a lesson that's filed away. If mm. I'm ever going to get involved with anybody, they have to eat like me. I can't be a short order cook or I can't sit and watch somebody eat pasta every night or pizza every weekend. I, I would, you know, I, it'll come out of my mouth and you know, that could ruin a relationship when mm. you start critiquing mm. someone's eating habits or the way they eat. So mm. you truly have to find your, your tribe to be harmonious true yeah. are you married i am does your wife eat like you no she doesn't <laughs> but we we've we've got a bit of a we've got a a good way of working it i mean part of why it works is because what when i'm out working during the week i work irregular hours so i'm not home for dinner anyway um and on the weekend we live in japan so we can go out to eat and go to places where it's perfectly acceptable and normal for me to eat food that's just completely meat based while she's eating what she wants to eat and my daughter's eating what she wants to eat so it's um uh, you know it works really well I think if we were living in Australia, for example, it might be a little more difficult because the just sitting at the table grilling meat thing doesn't kind of happen as easily in Australia. But, yeah. Well, I went and joined these dating sites. And, you know, a lot of these people say proud vegan, uh, plant-based. <laughs> I, I, I have mine that says I love meat. <laughs> meat and seafood. But... <laughs> got to be careful they don't think that's a euphemism or an innuendo no, or something I, I, thought of, I thought of that but you know because <laughs> i i don't think i would be able to i don't think i could date a vegan a veganite i don't think i could you know number one they'd go oh i can't stand the smell of meat i can't mm. cook meat in my house mm. yeah that's I, torture I, I think it would be it would be really difficult uh, on both ends of the spectrum. Of course, they're going to be saying like that. I can't have meat in the house. I can't have whatever. And you know, on the other side, you'd be thinking, I can't have this. Com I can't have this complaining all the time from someone. Exactly. Who <laughs> or 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 actually saying to you, well, I don't eat red meat. It is very unhealthy. Eve, uh, I really appreciate you spending the time the time with us um is there anything that uh is there anything that you wanted to share before we before we part ways 
if this podcast or this video breaks through at least one person, <coughs> one person to see that you can eat like this all your life mm. and never get sick, I feel I've accomplished something. And you. If yeah. they can see a 68-year-old who's been eating this way since she was 18 years old and she doesn't get sick, she's not crippled, she's not on medication, she's not depressed, she doesn't have lupus or fibromyalgia or Hashimoto's or migraines. If I could reach just one person and change their life, that would be a good goal. Mm. And I thank you for having these podcasts. Guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.